Let's do it. Please stand as we sing together number 568. Lift up your hearts, number 568. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Praise God's gracious mercy. Sing out your joy to the Lord, whose love is enduring. Shout with joy to the Lord, all ye earth. Praise the name above all names. Say to God, how wondrous your words. How glorious your name. to the Lord, praise God's gracious mercy, sing out your joy to the Lord, whose love is enduring. Let the earth worship singing your praise, praise the glory of your name, come and see the deeds of the Lord. Sing out your joy to the Lord, whose love is enduring. God's right hand made a path through the night, split the waters of the sea. All creation, lift up your voice, our God set us free. to the Lord, praise God's gracious mercy, sing out your joy to the Lord, whose love is enduring. Listen now, all you servants of God, as I tell of great words, blessed be the Lord of my shall endure. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Praise God's gracious mercy. Sing out joy, joy to the Lord, whose love is enduring. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Well, welcome everybody, indeed, uh, and thank you God for no, no rain and the wind has died down. This is just tremendous that so many folks could come. Um, we are very aware, I am extremely aware of um, grandparents. They're looking down. Grandparents on all different sides and our parents. Um, also, and so that so many of the family was able to come from all these different sides is just spectacular. And thank you. And um, also for our friends and folks of the Litchfield Lourdes community, it's been 17 years since I've been here. I came this time, this week, practically, 17 years ago, almost as long as Monsignor Tucker was pastor in the parish. <laughs> but in any case, so there's lots of good people. So let's just begin to listen, to celebrate, to give thanks. And we'll begin, as always, asking that God in his mercy would enfold us and help us. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God, and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the wisdom of God and the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
And may Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. And today we'll pray a, a votive mass of our founder, St. Louis Marie de Montfort. Oh God, you inspired St. Louis Marie to undertake the apostolic mission of preaching the gospel of Christ, your Son, to all people. Aided by his prayers and taught by the Virgin Mary, grant that we may be open to the inspiration of your Spirit, attentive to the cries of the poor, and so become untiring messengers of your reign. And we ask it through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So please be seated, everyone, as we listen to the Word of God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked upon and touched with our hands, concerns the word of life, for the life was made visible. We have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was made visible to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim now to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. For our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing this so that our joy may be complete. The word of the Lord. Thanks, giving thanks, giving thanks, 
the strength of your word. Send us to be your disciples, to bring all the world to the joy of your kingdom. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And you are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and to bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. For this I commend you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The invitation um, to today's celebration all said, um, spoke of my 50th anniversary as a Montfort missionary priest. And the wording is really important to me, to us, because before I was ordained a priest, I was and I am a Montfort missionary a member of the missionaries of the Company of Mary. And it's a religious congregation that was founded over 300 years ago in France by St. Louis Marie de Montfort. And that's how we got into this. And when any time a woman or a man enters religious life, the, the new group becomes like their second family. It really does. But there's always the first family. <laughs> there's always your first family. And that's something you never forget and helps you to be who you are. And um, I am utterly delighted that we have three generations of cousins and stuff here, and of dear friends too, three generations right here present today. And then we've got God knows how many generations looking on from heaven of grandparents and parents and brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts all looking down. It's, it's super. It's just really, really, really super. But the religious order, yeah, it is, it is my second family. And it gradually becomes the way you look at and see and deal with the whole world. You begin 
to see everything through the eyes, the heart of this religious family. And some years ago, there was somebody who kind of knew us pretty good, Monforts, and they said, you know, you Monforts, you're kitchen table folks. You're kitchen table folks. And it's so true. I mean, you put us in a fancy dining room and we don't know what to do. We're going to spoil something up. We tend not to be sophisticated, high-class clerics. We're kitchen table folks and happy to do it and happy that you're here with us. Kitchen table folks. It's just like our founder, St. Louis de Montfort and Mother Mary Louise of Jesus who founded our sisters, helped with us. We're close to the people, trying to be with the people, just like Jesus was. Because Jesus, as we heard in these readings, Jesus was God made flesh, flesh and blood, incarnate in our everyday lives and our struggles and our joys. And at our best, as Montfort's, this becomes very nitty gritty, very down to earth, just like Jesus said. We heard in that wonderful reading, the letter of John, what was from the beginning, cosmos, complete before anything, what was from the beginning, but what we have heard, what we've seen with our eyes, what we've looked upon, what we've touched with our hands, concerns the word of life, Jesus. By the human senses of hearing, of seeing, of touching, of caring for one another, that's the way the apostles came to know Jesus. And the joy of the apostles was to share what they had seen and heard and touched, to proclaim it, to create more fellowship, more communion, more joy. And, and this very incarnate flesh and blood way of looking at life, that spirituality, that's what I'm deeply grateful for these 50 years, that way of being with people in good times, in hard times, in sickness and in health. And I've had the, the joy this whole year, and it's not over yet, of, of just trying to remember things, people, events, stuff that happened. And one of the things that uh, came to me, thinking of this flesh and blood uh, goes back to the very first week that um, I was ordained, 1973, May of 1973. Some of you were there. Many of the dear folks who were there are all in heaven now. We've got pictures of it. It's like unbelievable. Um, and so the ordination was on a Saturday. The next day, my classmate has his first mass down in Bay Ridge in Brooklyn at Our Lady of Perpetual Help Parish. So. We all truck down there for his mass. And after the mass is over, now my father, for years, had helped to count the Sunday collection at one parish over. I can't remember the name of the place. They, he went down there all the time. They carried the collection. So we finish the mass, and Pop says, let's drive over to St. So-and-so's. So I said, OK. So I'm there in my new freshly black suit that's never been worn <laughs> for a new priest. And we drive over to this other parish, go down into the basement, and here's some of his buddies counting the collection. And we walk down, and Pop says, this is my son, father. <laughs> and it was like, if you know my father and you know Considines, I mean, people have very few words and don't usually show emotions. He was proud as punch. It was just really great. So this is my son, Father Bill. Well, anyway, we went back to the reception there and came back home. And that very night, happened to be Mother's Day, that very night in another parish in Jamaica, New York, the pastor was counting his collection, and he was robbed and beaten to death. And the thing is that this Father Conlon was dear friends of the Mahoney's, because they're related to the Corrigans, Malachi Corrigan and all of this. So they went to school with some of the people from Gate of Heaven. And I knew them all when the grandchildren went to school with us. So anyway, he's murdered. And 
his mother asked if I come to the house and, um, and say Mass. So the first Mass I ever said alone was in the Corrigan's house for her son who died around a kitchen table. <laughs> and it was wonderful. It was that kind of Jesus real in our flesh and our blood and we real in his. That was 1973. And if I could skip then 50 years, just this past May, a couple of months ago, the Montfortian family experienced another way of being kitchen table folks, being with the people, for the people in need. And this kind of starts the story in, in France. And uh, Father Olivier Maire was our provincial of the Montforts in France. I'd known him since he was a student. Wonderful, wonderful, brilliant fellow. But he loved to work with the poor in Haiti, in Africa. And he was um, there in, in our mother house in this village in France. And two years ago, he offered to give shelter to an immigrant who was under criminal charges for something else. And they took this guy in. And things were going pretty good for a while. And then on August 9th, two years ago, this guy had a complete psychotic break. And he beat Olivier to death in our house, in our mother house. And the word of that got almost the next day to Rome. Pope Francis, when he was giving his Angelus, he spoke of Olivier as, as a witness of charity. So anyway, jump, jump up to May. We were having our general chapter in Rome, the Montforts, meeting people from all around the world. And we had an audience with Pope Francis. It was arranged. And so we invited Father Olivier's parents and his brothers and their wives to come. And we all met outside in the big square there of St. Peter's. And I'd known them from 25 years back, the parents and stuff. So we were all hugging and work our way up through the Vatican palaces and all of this. And we were there, and I sat in the row with them. And when the Pope was willing to shake everybody's hands, but when he realized who they were, gave him this big embrace of the parents of this guy who had died. And everybody's crying and stuff. Very just down to earth, really embracing um, what we heard in the gospel, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. And no one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And the thing is this, that as Christians, all of us, all of us, and I suppose in a special way, priests, deacons, we're called not just to echo mouth the word of God, but, but to live it. And not just to, to celebrate the Eucharist, but to become Eucharist, all of us. Jesus says, I called you friends, each one of us. It was not I who chose you. It was I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear much fruit, all of us. So I'd like to kind of Stop talking and invite you to listen to a wonderful song. And you have the words of that song in your program. Um, because we love God. It was written by a Josephite um, sister. And um, I just think it's true for each one of us who we are. It gives flesh and blood to Jesus' words as the Father loves me. So I also love you. Remain in my love and love one another as I have loved you. So let's, let's just listen and pray this, this beautiful song. Why do you feed the hungry? Why do you comfort those in sorrow? What is 
Shall we rise and pray? pray 
We pray for the church all over the world, that more and more we become friends of Jesus, following his commandment of love, even as God dwells intimately within us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Pope Francis and all bishops, for women and men who hold leadership roles in the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will raise up good shepherds for his people, generous deacons, priests, and lay ministers to serve with the people and for the people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that Christians will work with all peoples of goodwill to cherish God's creation to protect the most vulnerable, to safeguard victims of violence, war, human trafficking, and famine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those suffering from floods, hurricanes, earthquakes, and fires around the world, and for those trying to bring relief and hope for a future we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are ill, all those we know who need God's healing, that as we care for them, we realize that we are seeing and hearing and touching the face of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our dearly departed, for Helen Murphy, Janet Cousins, and the Mass is offered for Francis Nagel La Montagne and for her family. Let us also pray for all the members of our families and our Montfort community who have gone before us, leaving us examples of faith and love, witnesses of self-sacrifice and dedication that one day we will all meet merrily in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray in silence for the people and the things closest to our hearts this morning. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Ever-living and ever-loving God, we give you thanks for the ministers of your word and sacrament by which you build us up into the body of Christ. May the way we live our lives give flesh and blood to your everlasting love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So please be seated, everyone. And we'll prepare now to celebrate the Eucharist. Eucharist means Thanksgiving, so by all means today, it's a real Thanksgiving.
And so, dear hearts, let us pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, as the homage of your servants, the offering we place on your altar as we remember St. Louis Marie de Montfort and grant that by detaching ourselves from earthly goods we may render all glory to your holy and powerful name. We pray it through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you glory, to offer you our thanksgiving, and to magnify your mercy in every time and every place. Father, most holy Lord of heaven and earth, who has revealed to the poor the mysteries of your kingdom through Jesus the Lord. You formed St. Louis Marie in the school of divine wisdom, so that moved by the breath of the Spirit, he preached to your people the sublime folly of the cross. Consecrated entirely to you by love, taking to heart the true devotion to Mary, he called all women and men to renew in faith the splendor of their baptismal grace. And so, filled with paschal joy, with the angels and the saints, we sing the hymn of your glory as with one voice, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, and saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim in song the mystery of faith.
When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. And look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit that we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Louis de Montfort, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. And remember, Lord, your servants, whom you have called from this world to yourself. We think of all our dear ones. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. For there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. I like to think that most of us learn this prayer at the knees of our parents or grandparents, and that we like to say it every day until the last breath. And so let us say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share some sign of that peace with those nearby. Robert, thank you. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and the blood of the Lord keep us all together unto everlasting life. Amen. the reception of Holy Communion, uh, there'll be three a priests, two in the front and one in the back. And if you have trouble walking, just stay where you are, and at the end, raise your hand, we'll, we'll come to you, okay? Our first communion song is number 340, Behold the Lamb, number 340. Those who walk in the dark are thankful for the sunlight. Behold, behold the 
whose hearts are blessed with understanding. Of the wheat, of the wine, united with His word, and the love we share. So Father Tom Poth is our, our provincial superior, and he's going to say a few words, but, and a prayer too. But before we do that, <laughs> I would just like to say, so we're celebrating my anniversary. It's 50 years. But today, today is an anniversary <laughs> for Gregory and Amy, and they were married, did, how many years ago now? Six 
six years ago today. And I, now Amy's lost with the little one somewhere out here. So some, somebody's got to work even on anniversary day. But congratulations for you guys and all that. Yeah. We had a great wedding up in Great Barrington six years ago. So, Father Tom. So I get to say the last word, which is always fun. <laughs> um, uh, traveling with, with Bill this uh, past May into June was an incredible uh, joy um, to be with him. And of course, there was this moment where we were going to have a private audience with the Pope. And he goes, oh, you know, you've seen one Pope, you've seen them all. <laughs> he was like, well, I've, you know, I've seen John uh, Paul II, I've seen Benedict. Benedict uh, Francis, he says, you know, they're just a pope. Um, but even he, it, it's exciting. It was a, a, a great moment of uh, blessing for, for all of us Montforts, especially the moment where, as he said, um, the pope really embraced the family of Father Olivier. It was just very touching. But what was also very exciting is that I've had the, um, this crazy privilege of walking with Considines. Yeah. Um, the um, I got away from the Monforts. Um, he has a wonderful wife and daughters and son. Um, and John's with us in spirit. I know that for sure. Um, but the Considines, the father's Considines, has always been an interesting uh, collection of two guys uh, who have had an impact on many people in the place, Matthew and, and Bill. But what was interesting about Bill has been um, over the years of, of traveling with Monforts um, and going to international meetings, Bill always gets quoted. And the funny thing that happened in the audience was I was sitting next to a father, Luigi Gritti, an Italian who's worked in Africa. And, and, he, and he was, you know, was kind of whispering the Italian, you know, uh, interpreting for me what the Pope was saying. And he goes, oh my God. I said, what? He said, he's quoting Bill. It's like, are you kidding? So, even the Pope uh, <laughs> quotes others. Um, we're, we're just, as a Monfort family, because it's a big family, and, and Bill has touched many countries, many lands, many peoples, many cultures. And it's what a, a grateful, um, for the Monfort missionaries, has been the presence of Bill. Uh, guiding us, and also the, the Daughters of Wisdom over the years, just accompanying and walking with so many people. Um, and it's, it's just, uh, we're grateful for the 50 years. And w it, during the chapter, when Bill walked into the chapter room on his anniversary day, he just got inundated with all kinds of folks, just crowding around him. It was like, he's a person we share um, among many, many people. And so, it is a day of, of great gratitude for the life of Bill um, and certainly his mom and dad who really uh, fostered this great uh, love of God. And you know, his dad was always great. His dad sat in the last, last pew, always. He was just a, a quiet, quiet guy sitting in the back. And his mom was always working with the people, especially in the baptismal program. So they um, had great examples to continue the work of the church. So this is a prayer for the Monfortian family throughout the world and all of you who walk in the spirit of the Monfortian family. This is our closing prayer and also this is the blessing of the food and when we have our table fellowship in Pilgrim Hall. God of goodness and mercy, remember the family which you raised up for the service of the church in response to the prayer of St. Louis Marie and blessed Marie Louise. Keep us faithful to our Montfortian vocation, united in love for one another in work and in prayer. Renew your signs and work new wonders. Grant that we may always experience your abiding support. Send missionaries to your church. And remember all those that the power of your spirit have moved, has moved to proclaim the gospel throughout the world. Remember those who are good to us, our families, our friends, and our benefactors. Remember us, O Lord. Give us light and wisdom to each of us. At the, at the end of our life on earth, grant that we may see you face to face with Mary, our mother, and all our brothers and sisters who have gone before us. Amen. Amen. Amen.
You got to finish by giving us a blessing. <laughs> yes, I will. So shall we rise? And uh, again, thank you, everybody. And from here, wend your way into the big pilgrim hall for its incredible feast that's already been blessed at a distance. But anyway, um, and just enjoy. So the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And our celebration, this part of it is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <laughs> ye watchers and ye holy ones, bright seraphs, cherubim and thrones, raise the glass strings, alleluia, cry out dominions, priesthoods, powers, virtues, archangels, angels, choirs, alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah.